Traditional Sweet Recipes from Malta, available online at www.traditionalmaltysweets.com. Traditional Sweet Recipes, creating a small slice of Malta that feels like home. Merhabalura fil program Maltese Down Under. Uf laħar ta' si matana l-lum ser nerġaw l-ura Malta fejn Mark Avellino ser jitkellemma zewċ players tal-Malta Rugby League dwar il-lob ta' rugby f-Malta. Sam, this might be the question for you. Um, how did a Yorkshireman uh, end up in Malta and start playing um, in the league here? Well, I came over to Malta originally for work. Um, being a Yorkshireman, rugby league's a big thing back home and Rugby Union also. I started in Malta playing Rugby Union. Um, then in the off-season, I was contacted by a guy called Anthony Mikolev, um, who asked me if I wanted to come and play Rugby League, and I wasn't even aware that we were playing Rugby League in Malta. Yeah. So it sort of snowballed from there, really. So, and that brings the question to you, uh, Jean. Um, Rugby in Malta, I had no idea that it existed. So how did, how did you, as a, as a born and bred Maltese, even discover rugby and start playing rugby? So basically, when I was a kid, around uh, 12 to 12, 13 years old, uh, a coach came to, to my school and started teaching us rugby. And not generally teaching us, just telling us what is rugby, mm. what do you do, and uh, how is the sport? Because everyone in Malta thought it was American football, thought it was rugby. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, and then I basically fell in love with the sport, and just started playing it. And I've been playing uh, eight years now, and got stuck to me. It's, it's what I love to do. Now. So you never um, played soccer when you were younger? I or? played soccer. I've done a couple of years while I played soccer, and played rugby at the same time. And then I had to choose which one I wanted to go forward with, and I chose rugby. So for the two, this is a question probably for both of you. Um, you know, so you're here representing Malta, mm -hmm. um, and and you're in a country where probably it's probably hard to get recognition for for the sport. How do you find the reaction is when people find out you play rugby? When people think of rugby in Malta, they normally think of union. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody really knows what rugby league is, which is quite. A shame, really, because as a national squad, we're ranked 18th in the world. Mm. Um, you know, it's it's difficult because we don't really get the recognition as rugby league players that that we should. And rugby league as a game itself doesn't really get the recognition it should in Malta. It doesn't get the same sort of sponsorship. It doesn't draw the same amount of players. It doesn't get the same funding in schools and that sort of thing. So it's quite difficult, mm. but we're trying to build it. And do you do you find that um, the trying to build it, you know, like trying to get players to play the sport, where do you get the players from? Like, We try and recruit them from the union clubs, to be perfectly honest, <laughs> because, <laughs> because we, we all play union as well. Yeah. Um, and the, the union season goes a lot longer than the, the league season, and um, they don't clash. Mm. So normally when the union boys would be getting fat, we'd tell them to come and get fit instead and, yeah. and try and learn a new game. Like, so you've had this Australian connection to the team's development. Uh -huh. um, the origin of the team, how was it put together? Do either of you know much as about that? As far as I'm aware, uh, it was put together in Sydney. Mm. It was um, because Anthony, who I mentioned earlier, and Dave Agzisa, Anthony lives in Malta now, but Dave's still in Sydney. And as far as I'm aware, it was originally set up as a heritage side in Sydney. Yeah. So um, in the, the composition of the team, are they mainly Maltese and expats from other places? or? Um, um, there's quite a few Maltese, we've got quite a few English in there, we've got a few Australians in there, we've, it's a bit of a mix of all sorts really, mm -hmm. eh, mate? It yeah. is. And um, do, you, do you find that, uh, like for you in particular, the, um, to represent Malta um, as a, like the flag, I suppose, representing the flag uh, at that level, at, at like a World Cup level, um, how, did, how did that feel the first time that you had to go out there on the pitch? First time I went on the pitch, generally, my legs were shaking. Yep. I couldn't run. <laughs> and it was no change there, then, man. Yeah. <laughs> it was the worst game of my life, to be honest. It felt good, <laughs> but it was the worst game I ever played in my whole life because I was so excited seeing the fans, seeing the Maltese fans, seeing all them people looking at us, mm. representing your country. It's a big deal for us. 
You know, I've been bo born and bred here, and representing your country is like uh, you can't get any higher. Yeah, yeah. So that process of being in the World Cup qualifiers, um, what was the kind of journey that you went through with that? Because obviously you, you got to a certain point, but um, it sounds like it was pretty exciting. The journey was, uh, I started when I started two years ago, we, we played against Czech Republic and uh, it was a great game. We won, it was, the team was solid. Then we played against Greece, Greece had more experience and uh, we lost it and we stayed in the same group. Last year it was the best year of uh, rugby league in Malta. We played against Belgium and one of the nicest pitches in the world in Leeds and, yeah. and we won. We won just by one point which is a really narrow win. Yeah. And then for the qualifiers then that the same year we played against Spain. We, we played, we went to Spain. It was a nice game. To be, to be perfectly honest, I thought we, should, we could have won the game. We ended up losing the game, yep. and uh, we had to get, we had to play against Greece, but Greece forfeited forfeited the game. Wow. So we didn't have actually our full potential mm -hmm. time to maybe get through. The the thing it tells me, and like the little bit I do know about rugby, is um, Spain are fairly powerful in yeah, that, and I think Belgium, I think it's they're fairly good squads. Yep. Um, so you've played against two fairly significant sides. Mm -hmm. We also played against Ireland. Yeah. As and well, Ireland also. as well. Yeah, okay, yeah. So yeah, that, which is ranked number four in the world. Yeah, so to be able to hold your own against those sort of teams when you're, like, they, they've probably got so many more resources mm -hmm. thrown at them. Um, you know, does that make you sort of feel that there's actually something that can really be grown here if for the sport? Definitely. Yeah. It's a pride thing as well, it makes yeah. you feel proud. I mean, we're just a small little island in the middle of the Mediterranean and yeah. we're competing with the likes of, of Spain, who, yeah. you know, the population that Spain have got, I don't know what they've got. Um, it's a lot more. Yeah, it's, it's a lot more than Malta, eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Plus, yeah, yeah, so if you think about it, uh, most of their players are professional. Yeah. That's all they do is play rugby, play mm. rugby. Yeah. All we do is we have to go work in the yeah. morning, maybe work night shifts, then go training destroyed, and then have to go to games. Mm. Sometimes you go to games after your work. Yeah. I think if the national players would actually do it as a full-time job, mm. it'd actually be one of the top teams in Europe. Who back Jane fit me in program your horta Maltese down under. Yet to see Utubatulna, commenti yo su Jerementi, I'm Ludan permit Salim Beltana, Maltese TV at gmail.com. Yo in Kella for Il Pajna Tana for Facebook, Maltese down under. Yena Marlina Tikoma Puntamenti Horal, Palunjima, Flissessin, Saha.